Well, let's get into Caden Proctor. He's had a busy couple months. The former five-star, as I mentioned, spent his freshman year with Alabama. How about this? January 10th, Nick Saban retires. A couple days later, Alabama hires Kalen aboard. The then five days after that, Caden Proctor puts his name in the transfer portal and finds a home with the Iowa Hawkeyes, who's ranked as a number two overall transfer per 24-7 sports. And then March 19th, news breaks that Proctor will leave Iowa and return to Alabama. The ripple effect incurs after that. And um, Chris, you brought him up as the only example. He's the outlier, right? And I think that just goes to show that we will see more cases like Caden Proctor in the future. But Carl, I got to ask you, right? You're the man with the pulse, especially on the ground at the high school level. Uh, your initial thoughts when you saw this with Caden Proctor, because it seemed to be really the first of his kind with a player of that stature. I think that number one, you have to take into account that Nick Saban leaving causes a knee jerk reaction. So from an emotional standpoint of where you at, you feel like Coach Saban left, He's absolutely the reason that I came here. So I'm going to jump in the portal and then I'm going to go to Iowa, which is his hometown, his hometown school. When you get to Iowa, the culture is completely different if you've been to Iowa and you've been to Alabama. Coach Ferens is a great coach. Hall of Fame coach has done a lot of great things with kids, but his program at Iowa is ran in a completely different way than the University of Alabama program is running, even with Kalen DeBoer taking over for Coach Saban. So you get there, and whatever happens is you don't find the same enjoyment or passion for that that you did at the University of Alabama. So these are young guys, even though they're making a lot of money now, even though they're guys we talk about from a national standpoint, it's not surprising to me that a guy that's 19 years old would make a decision like this and say, hey, I have buyer's remorse now. A lot of my friends stay, because he's not the only kid from Alabama that kicked the tires to possibly leave. Some of their better players also looked into other situations. And then when they got to know Kalen DeBoer, they say, hey, this guy's a really good coach too, and we want to stay here in our program. So you probably have a lot of those guys calling him saying, hey, it's still going to be good here. It's not a surprise to me that he wanted to go back. Chris, you got a little bit of a different perspective on this just in terms of how you cover the transfer portal. Did this surprise you at all? I guess there's no surprises in today's college football. When you, when you saw Caden Proctor into the portal and then basically engage in a game of back and forth between Alabama and Iowa? It surprised me a little. Um, we got a little bit of a heads up on the Caden Proctor news when it was going to happen um, a couple hours ahead of time. We were chasing that. Um, I think it's surprising anytime you see a player of that magnitude choosing to move once, let alone twice in a semester. Uh, but I think it's very reflective of where we're at in college football. And I think generally if you're surprised in college football right now, you're following the wrong sport because anything can happen at any time. And I think it's just a reflection of where the rules are and what's allowed. And frankly, like I wasn't always decisive at 18. I don't think anybody was. So I don't think players. we should be surprised that these players are moving on in situations like this because there's a lot of things that go into moving away from home for the first time and learning to live on your own. Smoke, you told me to let you cook in the beginning of the show. I'm going to let you cook here. I know you got a ton of thoughts on this situation. So please. Well, when we first thought about this whole conversation of transfer portal, we all had the information of saying, well, if you can transfer twice without a penalty, all Ken Gallon Proctor did was look at it and say, hey, hold on. There's a loophole in this system. Mm -hmm. And the loophole is I can go wherever I want, collect that bag, leave with the bag in my hand in front of you. That's not robbery or stealing. Mm -hmm. That's I'm playing the game the right way and going back to the school that I wanted to from the beginning, getting paid what I wanted to get paid again. So all he did was double dip. So if I can double dip, this trend is going to happen. And the process of getting a collective bargain agreement, if I'm a player, I want no part of that. This is an untapped salary cap. At this point right now, I'm trying to cash out as much as I possibly can, and I will, because there are schools out there that wants the good player. And when you want me, you pay whatever you want. And I can negotiate whatever our price that I want to negotiate. There's no collective bargain. There's no salary cap. Right? There's no structure on any position of need. So I can tell any school that I'm worth $2 million and work my way up to four. Take the four, go somewhere else, and get five next year. Carl, you be, you, go ahead. The, the thing with that thought process, though, Smoke, is that works for Caden Proctor. That works for the top 4 or 5% of the player. 
But all the rest of those guys in the roster, they don't benefit from that the same way. So you have to look at that. If I'm a player and I'm Caden Proctor, of course I want it to be like that. If I'm Drake May, if I'm Caleb Williams, if I'm Shador Sanders, I want to be in that situation. But if I'm the left guard on the team, I want collective bargaining. I want more money. Then that's the way that those guys are going to get more money. We cover the top 5% of players. But the other guys, those guys are losing out big time. Carl, let me follow up on that. So if you're Kirk Ferentz, you've been, a, you've been a head coach before at the high school level. Obviously, you're c connected to a lot of these guys at the collegiate level as well. How does this impact Iowa going forward? Because, you know, Caden Proctor is a five-star offensive tackle from the state of Iowa. It's a guy that they have a lot of connections to, right? There's going to be a lot of talent that comes through that state. How does this maybe kind of change the perception of how they deal in the new age of college football? You can't miss what you never had. So when he picked Alabama out of high school, you can move past that. But him coming into your program, participating in the spring and being on campus, that stings really bad and it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth. And that's when you, and that's when you have to answer questions. Are there problems in the locker room? Are there pro do I have a culture problem? What kind of issues do I have? And whether those are true or untrue, that becomes the perception when you're looking at a situation like Hayden Proctor, how did the collective manage his contract for him to be able to do what he did? There's a lot of questions to be answered. Coach Ferenz has a good program, and he has for a really long time, but it's got to be frustrating when you have the guy on your campus and you think that he's going to solidify your offensive line, and then he's out like a thief in the night. In all fairness to Iowa, Swarm, their collective there, had a contract with him, but they did not pay him anything out. To the point he did one deal with the local i believe car dealership that he did complete but everything else was not paid out so he was at iowa for a short time but he wasn't compensated in the way we think he might have been in iowa which was a six-figure nil contract um he's told 24 7 sports that in the past but um iowa did not lose a lot of money from caden proctor in the situation because of the way they structure his contract so how, how are collectives protecting themselves in a, in a case like caden proctor that will more than likely be used as a use case going forward have you seen anything from a strategy standpoint in terms of saying hey we don't want to be in this position are they wising up in, in terms of some of the language that they're using in some of these agreements it can vary considerably but yeah absolutely in iowa's case they had something i think that i would consider a zip code clause so if you live outside the radius of iowa city a certain amount of mileage the contract is void um, so iowa got out of the caden proctor contract like that and services were not rendered for caden proctor so services were not paid for um, in other cases, as I mentioned earlier, you structure the contract around transfer portal windows. You might give a small um, chunk of the money up front to essentially um, incentivize the player, but you don't give them money over the long term until they're locked in your roster for the following season. And I think collectives are starting to really, maybe not wise up, and I think it really depends on the athlete, but they're starting to be more strategic about the way they approach these negotiations. The, the Caden Proctor saga will certainly have uh, big picture ramifications for college football. As I said, it's going to be a case study for a lot of these teams, a lot of these collectives as well. But Smoke, I mean, for Alabama, this is a big deal, right? You get your left tackle back. Guys started 14 games, right? I think people really aren't talking about this enough. And you look at Alabama, the offensive line. You got Tyler Booker at left guard. You got Parker Brailsford coming over from Washington. We'll talk about him here soon. Jaden Roberts at right guard. It allows Elijah Pritchett, who hasn't really start, who hadn't really played that much, but is a guy that we had ranked as a five star coming out. Now all of a sudden, for Kalen DeBoer, you get Jalen Milrow back. That's a huge deal to be able to get Caden Proctor back in the fold. Now you can go back to bully ball. You got those two inside guys, and you got the center transferring over that understands the system, and you can play ball. So at the end of the day, Alabama is sitting back saying, "Hey, listen, if you got the car, if he didn't get the money, whatever he was promised that he didn't get." We're going to roll tie down here to keep on swinging with Brock at left tackle. All right, Smoke, you, you've been on the, the player personnel side at, at every level. Uh, college with Maryland, Buffalo Bills in the NFL. If you're Iowa in this situation, granted you and I, we haven't been working in college football during the, the NIL transfer portal era. You have uh, over the last couple of years. But if you're Iowa in this situation, you're banking on a guy like Caden Proctor, that type of talent, right? A top five player in the country, the number two transfer portal player. He's plug and play. He's already shown what he can do in his freshman year. What do you do from a roster building standpoint if you're the Hawkeyes and you're, the, the other shoe is dropped and it's going to be a pretty limited market, as we heard from Matt Zenitz here in April? What are the options there for them? Well, if it was any other team that was an offensive line, you, or a team that could basically 
develop their own and put them in there, you'd be concerned. But this is what Iowa does. Mm -hmm. They find them, they build them, they do all the research and they plug and play and they find ways to win eight to nine games and figure it out. That's how they survive and that's how they're going to survive moving forward. Coach Ferenz is as good of an offensive line coach as there is in the United States of America. He has multiple offensive line coaches on the staff. Otto Caden Proctor is a talent. There's nobody, like Smoke said, that's more prepared to deal with the loss of an offensive lineman in the University of Iowa. Chris, I want to come back to, you know, Caden Proctor. We're talking about big picture ramifications. I can't help but think that we might see a little bit of that ripple effect, ripple effect today. I mean, Caden Proctor was one of those use cases as a guy who transferred to Iowa and then after a couple months decides he wants to go back to Alabama. There's also been some other reports of some guys that transferred in that December window who might be unhappy with their roles and that potential fit. Do you think we could see a couple names over the next couple weeks that maybe hit the portal that transferred in that December window? Absolutely. We're already seeing it. I mean, last night um, we reported that Penny Boone, the Louisville running back, is going to go back in the portal from Toledo. Um, and just a second ago, Brandon Marcello, our colleague, reported that Tyler Barron, the, uh, I guess, Tennessee transfer who went to Ole Miss, then went to Louisville, is going to go in the portal. And that's been something that's rumored behind the scenes for weeks now uh, with Tyler Barron. So I think it's going to happen frequently. And in this era where um, contracts are on the table and depending on who you talk to, uh, contracts aren't met or maybe players are unhappy, they have the agency and the flexibility to now return to the portal if they want to. Um, even though I think a lot of people would argue uh, the degree tracks are also getting messed up uh, along with that. But that's not really the main topic of conversation on Transfer Portal Day. Louisville has some great things with their collective. I think their collective is fine. When you talk about a running back and a tight end going and then deciding they don't want to be there, I think this is a part of the portal that people don't talk about. We're talking about system fits. You a tailback and you went to play in Coach Brown's offense and you got there and you see that it's heavy 10 personnel and it's heavy air raid. And as a running back, you're like, where do I want to get my touches from? And so I think that that's more about the systematic fit and realizing I'm going to be doing a lot of pass blocking and catching your running back and middle screens then I'm going to be running the ball downhill and now I'm here and even though collect from a collective standpoint I might have got the money I wanted but I might not have picked the right systematic fit that I'm looking at when I think about the way that I want to play football and so I want to go run inside zone and GT counter and gap scheme stuff so I can run the ball downhill. Smoke, I want to ask you, you've been an NFL scout before, right? It's a, it's a new dawn, it's a new age in college, college football, the transfer portal and NIL. It doesn't seem like when a player transfers, because the, the frequency of movement now in college football, that it's, it, it, it's something that comes up as a red flag, as it used to when you transferred in college football. But now you see these multi-time transfers, and you wonder, in a guy like Caden Proctor's stature, and maybe some other players who aren't as talented as Caden Proctor, what does that look like from an NFL front office standpoint? Well, from the NFL standpoint, you gotta still look at it, and these are 18 and 19 year olds that are making emotional decisions that at some point might affect them, but when you, if you look at Caden, Caden might have had a conversation with some of the other offensive linemen that said, I'm out of here as well too. And those guys said, nah, I'm staying. Well, he already made his decision. So when you're in the front office of an NFL team, you have to just research the talent, what's on the field, and do your background check on the character off the field and figure out, is that something that you want in your building? But this is the norm. And if you're not going with the norm, you're gonna get yourself caught up in a situation that you don't want to, and you're gonna over-evaluate what's there instead of evaluating what you need in your building to go on to be a productive NFL team. Yeah, pretty crazy uh, just in terms of what we're seeing. We're going to talk about quarterbacks a little bit later in the show as well. Chris, I guess you can't underestimate a good uh, spring break there for Caden Proctor in the Crimson Tide. The Crimson Tide certainly going to be one of those teams to watch. We'll talk about positional breakdown here in a little bit as well. Um, Carl, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um, you think about Kalen DeBoer, um, what do you, your, your thoughts so far, what he's done on the recruiting trail, but in the transfer portal as well, this, this seems to be a team that's been pretty savvy, uh, not to mention Kane Proctor coming back, but Keon Sapp. Your initial impression so far, what you've seen in the new head coach? I'm not surprised. Kalen DeBoer is a great football coach. As a high school football coach, when he was coaching NAI football in Iowa, high school coaches from all over the country were going in there trying to learn Kalen DeBoer's offense. He has been a winner and a big-time coach everywhere he's been. Now, the average fan 
may not have known a lot about him because he's not a flashy guy, but this is a hell of a football coach. Also has Courtney Morgan as his general manager who helped build rosters at both Michigan and Washington who were in the national championship game. I think Courtney Morgan being there, running the personnel side of it, has been significant for the University of Alabama. They're attacking needs, and I expect them to be very, very active with the top players that come in the portal.